Now with modern bikes, I mean, setting preload and just getting spring tension for a rider is not this humongous task where you need all these specialized yeah. tools to get all these unique things in place. That's it's right. actually a pretty simple exercise, so getting your bike set to your weight can really enhance the safety of the bike. There's no question. And, and the thing that we found with that too is usually one of the first questions I'll get on a two-day school, I'll say, what's everybody looking forward to? What is it that you come here to learn? If I get somebody that says, I need to learn about suspension right off the bat, that tells me that I probably need to work on his technique more than anything because there's something that's happening that he's doing to the bike that's making it upset. So what I usually tell people is the second day of our school we'll talk about suspension. We want to work on the riders first right. because there's so much adjustability. Until I've seen that person ride, I can't just go and start turning knobs and or, or having James or anybody else just start turning knobs. We need to make sure that what they're doing on the bike is correct. And then afterwards, once we get them more confident on their bike, they're starting to feel for more things. So then you can really start to do some just basic suspension work and get them feeling for, for better things, you know. And when you're following people, you can see what the bike is doing. And because a lot of times, the technique of even rolling off a throttle, if they're doing that too abrupt and transferring weight too fast, first thing they want to blame is suspension. Like, I try to get them out of that mindset of, it might not be the bike, let's work on ourselves. Right. And then as you get to be a better rider, we're going to be able to make adjustments according to your riding ability and go from there. I'm Chris West, I work for Michael Jordan Motorsports. I work on Ben Boston's bike and I work on Roger Hayden's bike. I build all the suspension for both of them. For your stock shocks and stock forks, you know, they're limited on what they basically can do. They're going to do uh, dampening adjustments with their uh, rebound and compression. Uh, maybe preload if, if that particular set of forks has a preload adjuster, stuff like that. Um, as far as spring changes and, and valving changes, your average street guy's probably not going to do those things. Um, but being able to do that, uh, you'll, you'll notice a huge difference in the way your bike handles. So if you have a stock bike and you're too big, if you, if you weigh a lot compared to like an average rider, you're gonna, you're gonna wanna have the uh, new springs put on so you make sure your sag is good. That way uh, when you ride it, it's not blowing through the suspension and sitting on the bottom of it. And, uh, that way it's not putting all the pressure on the tire and it, the suspension is actually doing its job. We don't do so much sag because most of our changes are done through mathematics and uh, you know our geometry changes, but your street guy can do sag basically, measuring the bike unloaded and uh, measuring the bike with the rider, uh, and, and set a, a basically the preload up on their suspension. These guys are, are so tuned to their bikes that the slightest changes they'll notice. So whether a bike is, isn't turning in or is running wide or. Uh, not as stable in a straight line, a lot of little things, and, and these might just be small changes, but uh, to a professional rider, they're going to notice these small changes. So now while you're on the bike, I'm going to measure sag and see where you're at. Okay. You have no preload in the front end at all, so grab the, grab the bars for me. Let's see what we have. Right now, you're only using half your travel that's available to you. And the sag is actually correct. So I'm guessing this has been resprung. So right, bonus so for you. <laughs> okay, good. Bonus for you, this has been reworked. All right. So it's got much stiffer springs up front. As you're using just over half, occasionally you went to two thirds with a hard braking drill. I'm gonna add a little bit of preload, but not much at all. So stay there, let's measure the back of the bike. Okay, 540. Okay, off you get. Don't worry about me. And sag in the back is 30 millimeters, so that's good. So the bike has been roughly dialed into some on your weight, although they've gone into the front end and changed it significantly. So if you can go the other side with Chris, because we only have two wheels, the bike has to balance okay. front and back. It cannot do this. Right. Right? You right, don't want to be on a seesaw. Yes. So what I'm going to do is take the front end and bounce it. What you should see is that I depress it. It comes up 
and then it stops completely. Okay. So it's just the return stroke, it should not continue to bounce. Yes. So you can see you're basically on a trampoline, which yeah. isn't is very standard in terms of how stock forks come from the showroom. So this is the control for rebound. And in essence, it's basically a valve. Oil's going around unchecked right now. So we need to shut it down so it doesn't just keep bouncing. So we'll take it all the way in and we'll come back three clicks. All the way in and back three. One, two, three. Now again, we just want it to top out. See the difference? Yes. Needs one more actually. It's still bouncing over the top a little bit. That's better. Now to your knowledge, the fork oil hasn't been changed since you go on the bike. Correct. But it may have been changed when the springs were put in. So the fork oil changes are about every 5,000 miles to keep the clickers where they are perfect. Now the back of the bike needs to do exactly the same as the front. Okay. And that looks pretty good. Comes up and stops, right? Right. Okay. I'm going to tell you that's not very good at all. Oh. And I'm going to sit you on the bike and show you why. Okay. So same thing, grab the bars, feet on the pegs. Now when I push the back of the bike down, it should just top out, same as the front. Right. If it lifts you out of the seat and puts air under your butt, that's not good because it's pitching you forwards okay get the pro you see I what understand. i'm saying there yeah feel it yes feel yourself getting nudged yes okay i don't think you quite like that no i do not <laughs> so let's fix that up it's not good in between my legs neither okay one two three four five six seven eight nine so you're at eight clicks out so we'll go to four one two three four let's try that now the goal is to just top out yeah. Needs to go one more click, so we'll go to three. Okay. Feel the difference? Yes. Okay, so if you go ahead, dismount. Again, go stand over by Chris. I'm going to pull the bike out of the chalk. And then the balance aspect is that when I push down on the bike, it's identical front and rear. Yes. Oh, wow. And to, I call that perfect primary balance. The bike just hits a bump and it's ready for the next bump. Every time you hit a bump with this, right, and it eventually settled down. If you're loading the front and trying to go in a corner, and you're braking as well, it's doing this in the corner. So you have to hold on to the bike, right? which gives you a ton of fatigue, but worse, it gives you no confidence in the motorcycle whatsoever. No, yes. And you have to hold on, and you have to make the bike submit rather than the bike work with you. Right. So when you go out now, you're gonna notice a profound change in the way that the bike handles. It'll be way easier to ride. Right. Because wow. you can relax. Yes. You don't have to do this in the corners to make it do what you want it to do, which is get through the corner. Right. Okay, so we'll check in with you after you arrive, yes, after sir. lunch. If, if everything's going well and we find a good setup in the first practice, great. But usually we're doing small tweaks all the time. Sure, we make changes uh, right up until race time usually. It's the chassis is, is unbelievable. It's a lot better from uh, earlier this morning. So that's the way I look at it. It's just superb. So you can really understand the value not only of just a basic setup to your weight and balancing the chassis out, but the value also of comfort when you're going to Yes, sir. Absolutely. There's a flip side to all that adjustability too, that if somebody wants to have a go at it and try it. They could get completely lost. It's lost. And yep. where your, te your techniques here of getting the rider correct mm -hmm. first has invaluable effect on the suspension itself because of better riding technique. 
Yeah, and it's it's hard for somebody, you know, it's hard for even somebody like you. You can look at somebody and you can set certain parameters without even seeing them right. But but if they don't come in and give you the right feedback, it's really hard for you to just take a guess at what it is they're actually looking for, you know. So, you know, I try to give them the knowledge to try to let them see if they build consistency on their riding, on, on how they're getting in the corner with their body position, let's just say, how they're downshifting into a corner or whatever. I tell you right now, I, you know, people that know me know I'm pretty, sometimes I can be unpolitically correct and, and, and harsh, but it, I don't know how anybody can p complain about the bikes that we have, right. that they're, all of us are capable of riding these days. They're so good that when somebody comes in and says, oh, my suspension stinks, I go, well, hold on a minute, you know. <laughs> um, I, I have to almost check myself and say, like, hold on a second, it might not be the suspension. Let's, let's work on some other things. And um, because, as you know, you know, when you came here yesterday, I, don't, I haven't checked the clicker on my bike probably five years. You know, we get bikes from Suzuki. And having you here yesterday was invaluable to me because we were able to interact with the students and show them what it was like to have a rider kind of crew chief relationship and let them see that the changes that you were making was based on the comments that I was coming in and making to you. And I think it taught them a lot about how you can interact and how when you get a consistent rider, you can get to a setting a lot quicker. Again, the reinforcement there, though, is that you have the right technique to provide the right level of food. Hopefully, I do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, hopefully that's the case. But, well, uh, congrats on the school. Thank you it's so much. It's a great program. Yep. And I'm sure so many armed services riders are really going to benefit from this whole education process. Yeah, well, I hope they do. And I'm a big fan of you guys and everything you guys do for our sport and keeping it fresh out there. And I know you guys pop your heads up in a lot of places and to have you guys here for two days has been great so I appreciate that very very much.